It is Fox Across America with Jimmy Fallon. Fired up to talk to this next guest. Everybody is, of course, waiting for him to get to the bottom of the Biden family business scandal. I'm still waiting for the winning horse in the Kentucky Derby, though. He's a superstar representative for the first congressional district in Kentucky, chair of the House Oversight Committee. James Comer is in the house. Hey, hey. Hey, Jimmy. So you're out there digging up this laptop, but have you taken time off of that mission to get me a horse pick yet? Man, I, my bracket was so bad, but I did pick Florida Atlantic in the final four. Did but, you? Uh, yeah, but it went downhill after that. Unbelievable, Comer. Uh, well, if, if it makes you feel any better, there's nobody. I mean, nobody has a bracket <laughs> worth, unless you're using it to roll a cigarette. That bracket <laughs> paper is just absolutely useless. Um, let me run in right really quick because I saw you making the rounds yesterday about Alvin Bragg and how he has kind of crossed the streams, you know, with the federal prosecutors and everything in between, are we nearing a day where he may, in fact, have to testify in front of you guys? Well, he doesn't have the luxury to decide whether or not he can come in front of Congress. When he decided to play on the on the federal level, then he became squarely in the congressional jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's trying a case with the current front runner. Uh, for the Republican nomination for president, not to mention a former president of the United States, on a case that the DOJ passed on, that the statute of limitations has clearly passed on, on campaign, on federal campaign finance law. I mean, our concern all along has been, under Merrick Garland, the Department of Justice has become weaponized, and here we have a situation where uh, we've got a, a, a local DA uh, trying to indict a presidential candidate, and and we want to know if there's been communication between Merrick Garland. Is this a coordinated effort with with all the other legal actions? And just have some basic questions for Mr. Bragg. And uh, so far, he's been uh, defiant and and uh, to say the least, unwilling to answer basic congressional questions. Yeah, well, one way or the other, it certainly reads like it's politically motivated, given what you just said right. about the feds passing and the previous New York District Attorney passing. But what I'm so interested in here, because people on the left, to their credit, have called this out, okay? We even have our former governor, who's not terribly popular here in New York, but even he said that it looked like a political persecution, and people right. had reason to be cynical. But what I'm amazed at is the the appetite in the media, because as we sit here trying to ring up Trump on the equivalent of a parking ticket, if it even rose to that, OK, there's really not an appetite to discuss what you unearthed last week, which is actual banking records that show the Biden family got how much from firms linked to China? Uh, over a million dollars cash uh, from from a company, so to speak, directly linked to the Chinese Communist Party. Remember, Joe Biden said it wasn't true. He even said it wasn't true after we produced the, the bank records. But at the end of the day, uh, Jimmy, they're going to have to – this was the first batch of bank records. Uh, we'll, we'll keep bringing more bank records uh, from more banks with more quote-unquote deals – that the Biden family made. And it's going to get to the point, even the mainstream media is going to have to talk about this because it's going to show that Joe Biden clearly has not been truthful with the American people. And every American should be scratching their head wondering, why did the Biden family get paid you know, millions and millions of dollars from the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, they're our biggest enemies. Uh, everyone in Congress, it seems like, in both parties want to ban TikTok. Yep. But yet the Bidens uh, can can just put in their pocket millions and millions of dollars from the Chinese Communist Party? I, I don't think so. And, and it's something that, unfortunately, didn't get press outside of conservative media. Uh, but that was the first batch. We'll see what happens with the second it's and the third and the fourth. Wow. It's, fa it's fascinating stuff. We're talking to Representative James Comer of Kentucky. He, of course, the chair of the House Oversight Committee. By the way, when you get when you get bumped up to something like chair of House Oversight, do they give you like new ties, new hair product? Like, how does that work? It sounds fancy. Uh, no, all I get arrows and bullets uh, aimed at me. <laughs> From the media. Yeah. It's like you became Rodney Dangerfield. You remember the comedian? He's like, I get no respect, no respect at all. <laughs> the, the thing that drives me crazy about the media, when, when I was announced after November, the election, that I was going to be chairman in January, they all called me conspiracy theorist, mm -hmm. and they said, uh, you know, he he, he wasn't 
up for the job. He's a conspiracy theorist that he he's trying to say the Bidens took money from China and everyone knows they didn't. And uh, then he said then he's trying to say. COVID came from that lab in Wuhan. Everybody knows it came from a wet market. And then once this stuff starts coming out, yeah. they're like, well, now, you know, this is, uh, this could <laughs> be, the, the, the president didn't know anything about it. You know, the president, <laughs> the president's completely innocent in this. You, you know? know, the more you talk about this, the more I realize, circling back to the beginning of this conversation, maybe we should let the conspiracy theorists pick our, pick our March Madness brackets. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're like 10 and 0, man. This is unbelievable. Well, you know, another point then, okay, is Karine Jean-Pierre last week when faced with the fact that you would unearth these receipts, she famously said, we're not going to comment on this because it's been all lies up until now, which we both know it hasn't been. But my question to you is, you know, and you said this a moment ago, is the receipts are going to keep coming. Like, what do you think it would actually take? Because to be honest with you, they're being negligent when it comes to the well-being of our country to not acknowledge that this much money has changed hands. Yeah, I think it's going to take more bank records, unfortunately. You know, if if there had been $1 mm-hmm. got, that went from communist China to, to Donald Trump's family mm-hmm. uh, for an undisclosed reason, then they would have been uh, drafted up impeachment papers. Yep. Uh, what we have here... Are, are millions and millions of dollars. And, you know, the Democrats, will, they'll always say, well, Jared Kushner did business with foreign countries, and I'm not, I'm not speaking in support of that, but I'll say this. I know what Jared Kushner's businesses were. Yeah. Uh, I know what Donald Trump's businesses are. My question to the Democrats, what are the Biden businesses? <laughs> I mean, that's what they said was a legitimate business expense. That's what his lawyer said, or his seed capital for a business. My question to them is, what business? Because I've been looking into this for several months, Jimmy, and I ain't found any business. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I found where they've been taking money and putting it in their pocket. Yeah. I haven't found any business. I haven't found any real estate. They don't manufacture anything. They don't have any employees. They don't sell anything. They're not licensed to be uh, lobbyists or foreign agents. So. I'm still trying to determine what business the Bidens are in other than influence peddling. Yeah, it doesn't really pass the sniff test. Maybe, maybe, maybe they needed storage for the classified documents that were on the floor of his garage. I mean, what do the crates go for in Delaware? Are they that expensive? I don't know. That's not good. Um, one more thing I'll throw at you because I know you've got a whole country to save right now. Um, are there timetables on stuff like this? Do you have an idea? of where this road's going to end, or are you just like at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you guys are finding? I think we're at the tip of the iceberg. I'm following the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, we knew where several money trails were based on, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, whistleblowers yeah, yeah. that were in the, the Biden family spear. But the bank records and the bank violations, Jimmy, are leading to more bank records and wow. more bank violations. So I think the money trail is bigger than we thought. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing I want to say, people keep saying this is about Hunter Biden. Mm-hmm. We found three and maybe four different Biden family members that got money on this first set of bank records. Wow. I think at the end of the day, there's going to be you know between five and seven Bidens the, that wow. were receiving substantial amounts of money from our adversaries, including communist China, for things that we, we can't determine what they were doing. And I don't think they would be giving them this money uh, were it not for uh, yeah. the big guy's help. So that's what this investigation is all about. It's the Biden family, and it's an investigation of Joe Biden. That's fascinating. And, 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 I, and I know it is. And, you know, whenever people try to bring up the whole, well, Hunter Biden's not the president, that's not the claim here. The claim is the guy who's the actual president, according to Hunter Biden's business partners, who are on record as saying he was getting a kickback. So let me ask you this. This is just speculative. This is just me and you doing a talk radio show now. Do you think there's any world where Biden keeps delaying this presidential announcement about running again because he's waiting to see what you guys find? I do. Wow. And if 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 it's as bad as as what we think and he's you know they never thought we would get the bank record jimmy mm-hmm. that's what the press uh, you know after they said i was a conspiracy theorist then when i got the gavel they said well you'll never get those bank violations treasury will never give you those bank violations no bank's ever going to give you the bank records wow they didn't know what we've been you know mm-hmm. negotiating for for months leading up to this this is a credible investigation that that Everyone in the financial industry realizes has merit. That's why they're cooperating with us. And I think that the American people are going to see that, at the very least, 
the President of the United States has not been truthful with the American people about the extent to which he knew about his family's shady business dealings with communist China. Fascinating stuff. Last question. Have you given any thought to who might play you in the movie? <laughs> it'll be whoever the biggest redneck they can come up with. That's who it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> They're hanging out there at a monster truck rally right now, yeah, scouting right. somebody. Sh- race I love it with his shirt off. <laughs> James Comer, the best. Well, keep fighting a good fight, man. I appreciate you giving us a minute. Thanks for having me, my man. There he goes, Representative James Comer. 